Hi, Mel. How are you doing this morning? Um, I'm doing very well. Thank you, Anemika. Thank you for having me. It's a great pleasure to talk to so many amazing women leaders in this great forum. Absolutely. It's our pleasure to have you on with us on, into this, um, onto this event. So thank you for joining us. Um, so uh, Mel, can you share a little bit about your role, about you, and maybe about Mars Pet Care? Sure, definitely. So my name is Miao Song. My role is Global Information, Chief Information Officer for Mars Pet Care Business. Uh, for those who know Mars Pet Care, it's one of the largest pet care company in the world. Uh, we own more than 55 lovely brands to provide services and food for, the, for your lovely pets, including brands such as Pedigree, Whiskers, IMS, Greenies, uh, Roy Cannon, uh, and also we own a lot of large pet hospitals in the U.S. Ooh. and in Europe. And now we're into um, Asia as well. So it's, it's a great company to work for. Our purpose is really create a better world for pets powered by data. So um, I've been in the role for more than two years, uh, actually reaching three years uh, in, in the business. Really love the business, love the whole ecosystem where we can make a lot of difference to improve the quality to the pet, um, pet lives, but also connecting with pet and the pet owners in different ways through the product and the services we offer. So, uh, so we embarked a journey of digital transformation about two years ago. That's super interesting. So do you own a dog? Yes, I do have a dog. My dog name is Ellie and she's more than three years old. Oh. So I, so she's, she enjoys a lot of good product um, from our company. And this, I, during COVID, during lockdown, I actually enjoy a lot of, uh, you know, works together with her and, uh, you know, um, having, it's actually quite grateful to have my dog uh, accompany me and my family um, so that we don't feel lonely. And uh, the, I think the relation uh, with my dog, it's really, really improve, I would call it more tightened because we actually spend more time together on daily basis. Oh, that's so nice to know. Um, I can totally say that. I think COVID has got both positive and negative impact onto it. And one of the positive aspects I have seen is that, um, you know, it has also brought me closer to my family. I've never had a chance to sit down with my daughters and talk about a few things which I would love to because they just come back from the school and they're so tired. I'll just feed them and they go to bed. So I guess COVID has given like a, you know, some good time, you know, where you can spend tightly with your family within, within your own house. So it's, I can totally uh, support that. Um, so I, I, I can, I mean, the other aspect of the COVID-19 is that I think 2020 has been a roller coaster ride for all of us, right? And, and we are still not done. <laughs> I guess we are getting into the next year very soon with, uh, with um, the similar kind of, you know, um, scenario. So I love, I, uh, our lives have changed, the way we work, connect has changed. So uh, across every facet of our interaction, we have adopted a new normal, right? Um, so I'm excited to hear your point of view on how this crisis has accelerated innovation at Mars Pet Care. Could you share more? Sure, absolutely. So I still remember vividly when the crisis started in early March, um, actually in Europe, and we, you know, the company actually um, very quickly we switched of working from home remote working to make sure that the health and safety of every single employee is the highest priority of the company um, that works very well very quickly you know the remote working really um, works and uh, we continue to support operation uh, in our company um, and during the covid there are a lot of digital transformation initiatives has been accelerated for example um, in Mars, we have a digital engine and really uh, help us to drive faster deliveries, um, user centricity and agile development. Uh, we have more than 20,000 associated in Mars engaging our digital engine initiatives. Uh, our, the heart of our digital transformation is really around, as I mentioned, speed and innovation. And this digital engine actually unlocks the solution for the business problems, um, for using of new technology and capabilities. During COVID, I see specifically in pet care business, we actually accelerated um, 
the e-commerce and direct-to-consumer capabilities. For example, for Roy Cannon product, um, we launched uh, the direct-to-consumer online store in more than five countries uh, during COVID, in France, in Germany, in Mexico, Argentina, et cetera. All of these initiatives, online store, were actually launched within a few weeks time frame. So that's a great example on how the innovation was accelerated and the deliveries was actually accelerated uh, you know, as well. So, um, and we continue to involve the new way of working uh, through design thinking and agile with more than 15,000 associates in, engaged with our user centricity um, and, and also design thinking for strategic initiatives. So, um, so that went very well. Um, the other area is that during COVID is we see that the decision making has been um, shortened, mm -hmm. which is quite a surprising to myself as well. Initially, as a large global organization, it took typically long to make a decision. But during COVID, and a lot of decision was able to be accelerated because I think the pressure is not from the internal. It, the mm -hmm. pressure is really the change of the consumer behavior. Consumer quickly shift from you know uh, the, from uh, going to the retail store, but you know shift into online purchasing. Yeah. So there's a huge change and huge push from consumer behavior perspective. So in essence the digital acceleration program, the digital capabilities were actually accelerated in our business during COVID. And also that turned, I think that shows a lot of result as well. Our business has a pretty good um, growth rate during the crisis. Thanks for the acceleration program. Thanks for the different way of working and also dedication of our associates in the business. Oh, that's really wonderful to know, uh, Mayo. So the rapid acceleration of projects to support the business and its customer over the COVID-19 crisis, um, I also know was accompanied by a deprioritization of some of these projects, right? So could you provide more details on what was deprioritized and the thinking behind those decisions? Um, is that something you can easily uh, reverse? Yeah, absolutely. So during the, during this crisis, and we have been really look at our investment to make sure that um, we mo make most of value of our technology investment. So the focus um, has been on few areas. The first area is really protect our business continuity because business continuity that means deliver the right product to our customers and consumers, mm -hmm. or continue our ration, our operation in your food factory. Uh, as well as pet hospitals are the highest priority. So, so our lot of investment are focusing on deliver business priority. The second one is really around how we actually protect cash flow for the company. So based on those principles, um, we actually deprioritize some of the investment and to make sure our efforts, our manpower and resources are focused on the most important projects, initiatives, to deliver the short-term outcome. Uh, we have pretty good uh, strategy uh, in the past so that we continuously, in the digital transformation space during COVID, we continue to focus on transformation itself to make sure that you know, the value is delivered and accelerated. So that's how we did that during, during the crisis. I think the, the good thing is that um, not just because we are able to focus the most important thing to do, but also make sure that the, the result and uh, um, the deliverables are aligned with the business priorities um, during the COVID. That's, that's, I, I, I think that's, that's amazing because, um, and you also talked about, um, you know, short and decision making cycles, which I think might have added to kind of you to understand what is my priority list looks like. Was that, was that kind of a, the, the, driver behind it? Yeah, exactly. So basically the organization, you know, very short term, I'm very quickly the whole organization, my team, and also uh, our business teams are aligned with the priorities so that it's very clear that make sure that we protect our operation and business continuity. So the quick alignment actually helped the decision making process to enable the organization to move faster. 
Interesting. I also heard, heard you talking about some of the accelerated projects, right? So could you maybe deep dive a little bit more onto what were those accelerated projects, uh, particularly, I think, around direct to consumer and um, you know, B2B business, which you mentioned? So um, could you talk a little bit more about those? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's one of the project is um, called a Roy Cannon Direct to Consumer Project, which is in our Roy Cannon division where we deliver personalized product and um, and also special nutrition to the lovely pets. And uh, and so during COVID, um, because a lot of pet owners were actually stuck at home, um, it's hard for them to do the regular shopping. So yeah. in order to meet the unmet needs and we quickly launched online capability to be able to deliver the products, um, to deliver, enable home delivery and deliver the product to the pet owners. So that's that was done in a short time frame. So it's an agile approach and we deliver MVP, minimal variable product, and launch it quickly and then scale it up to, to you know, scale up. That's how we did that. Um, I think the key essence is really change the way of uh, thinking to be much nimbler and faster during the crisis. But that's just one example. So there are other examples um, during COVID. You mentioned B2B. We also launched a B2B web shop uh, in Canada during, the, during COVID to make sure that we continuously deliver our product to our customer, uh, but also at the same time enabled 24-7 connection with our customers um, so that we have a real engagement with the customer online. So those are two examples. Um, but we have other, um, some of other capabilities, transformation program to really help to transform either end-to-end -end supply chain by improved demand forecasting accuracy, um, you know, or the other programs which actually help to modernize the core technology foundation. So all of these transformation programs are actually working together to help us with two things. One is continuously transform our digital core the other areas is actually um, enhance and build new capabilities. That's that's what we're doing as of today. Oh, that's that's pretty interesting. So you had to bring like new skills um, into the into your IT group, or you know maybe rapidly call partner expertise to to kind of you know cater to these challenges or you know dynamic aspect of you know the decisions which you were making. Yes, absolutely. So, so Digital Mars has launched a uh, new initiative uh, to change the way of working. So it, I mentioned digital engine. So the ess essence of digital engine is using design thinking approach, user centric approach to find a business problem, leveraging technologies such as machine learning, artificial intelligence um, to resolve the problem and then automate uh, the business processes to help drive efficiency. Um, around, around the digital engine, uh, we develop a strategy called the 361. It's, uh, it's basically changed the mindset at the same time drive speed and the result. Um, you know, that is not just a change of skill sets, but also a change of mindset. For example, we call it a three shifts. One is zero distance to the customer. Uh, when we talk about customer, we, we meant the consumers and customer is not internal customer uh, thought leadership to deliver the solution and then the third one is agility so those three things are the essence of uh, skill sets improvement and also mindset shift at the same time in terms of digital and um, digital and we focus on um, advanced analytics and data initiative. Um, so for example, more than 17,000 Mars uh, employees were involved in the analytics um, initiatives in, uh, in the organization. So that helps to really for people to really understand um, the, the art of possible through mm -hmm. technology, but also get, I would call educational uh, information to see what is what is the next innovation opportunities? I think the, the culture shift is, is quite important um, as a large organization to be able to really uh, realize the benefit of digital transformation. So that's what we do. Obviously there's still a lot of work to, to do, but we made uh, some good in progress uh, in the last, uh, probably last two years, I would say. 
So cultural shift, I can, I can say that it's not an easy thing, right? Mm -hmm. So how did you manage this in such a short time? I know you said you have been working in this past, past two years or so, but was this accelerated during this COVID-19 situation? How did you, how did you kind of you know, do that? It was indeed during COVID-19 situation, as I mentioned, um, during COVID because the, you know, the shift of consumer behaviors the change of the industry and the unmet need of pet and pet owners actually helped the organization to be able to move faster. Um, and there, I think there is a fundamental shift around rather than being internal focus, but the really focus on, on the consumer and the real customers um, as an organization. So for us, the, the customers are really pet and pet owners. So that mind shift happened um, in the last, I would say in the last um, two years, for example, the, the focus around pet centric approach mm -hmm. around the ecosystem actually is core, is part, is at the core of our strategy. How might we actually um, leveraging data we have, insight we have to drive consumer insights and eventually provide better services in nutrition, science, and healthcare to improve life quality for pets. I mean, a lot of strategy, the thinking is all always around this, this core. I think that really helped to change the mindset and also help to change the decision-making process. Interesting. Um, so how have you managed um, in a risk? I'm sure there was risk associated with this acceleration, you know, accelerated projects, right? Um, in an environment already full of like health um, and economic risk. Um, especially in the context of like, you know, vastly shortened decision, decision making cycles and empowered decision making. So how, how have you managed the risk? Yeah, I think it's a really, it's, there are a few areas. One is really during this crisis, um, there has been pretty clear um, guidance around decision making because we really actually using our five principles uh, to put health and uh, safety at the center of our associate at the center. Um, and, and as I mentioned, the decision making, in terms of decision making, we have a pretty clear framework on what is important. And, and based on that decision making framework and five principle, the decision is made um, based on a pretty good, I think, guidance. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of risk can be uh, mitigated. I wouldn't say there's no risk, but there's always a balance between risk and innovation all the That's time. That's true. That's yeah. true. That's completely true. So uh, I, I heard you talking that you know you you had to kind of shift um, you know a lot of folks to be working from home, right? So what were the most common challenges that employees um, newly working from home experienced? There are, if I look at, uh, I can talk about globally and obviously everybody, yeah. everybody's story is very different based on the family situation and personal experience. There has been some consistent theme across different geographies. So one thing is, um, I can say initially people got very nervous when they start to work from home. Um, and at that time, it's really important to provide some mutual support and to support it, to help each other. Um, so what I did with my team is really regular check-in to make sure that we don't just talk about work and we focus on supporting each other. Um, so basically even virtually feel like you are next to me, I'm next yeah. to you. If you have some problem, I can't help you all the problem, but at least I can help you to support your emotion, you know, that, that's what we do. I think that that helps a lot. The second one is regular, regular connection and check-in um, and uh, just to make sure that um, everybody understands the, the situation uh, with each other. Um, the third one is actually, I think also working from home offers opportunity for people to really um, having flexible way of working. So, mm -hmm. um, we also, at least from my perspective, I encourage my team to go out for a walk, to do some exercise. And if people feel really tired, just take some breath, take some rest. Uh, don't work too much, don't work too hard. I think that, that helps. Um, 
And then after a while, when people get used to work from home, a lot of people actually quite like it because it also offers some flexibility and uh, saving a lot of people's time of commuting, commuting to the office. Um, I heard actually a lot of people really love it. At, you know, <laughs> in, the, in the middle of the crisis, and you know, actually I really feel it's good. But at the same time, uh, long time working from home, and then when you stay with the same group of people uh, all the time, you know, you, you have young kids and uh, they have to do online courses that really need some guidance and help from the parents. And then if you have two parents working both at home and the question around how you help your kids, who's going to do that job, um, it's a burden sometimes, right? And plus, when you get used to with your family and you sit together at the same time, there's always a friction, at least from my personal experience, there is a friction in my family from time to time as well. So that become a challenge. I think that's really, really important around, you know, how you really resolve this, these issues. I would say there's no perfect solution, but what I, what I think supporting each other, take a rest where possible will make some difference. Obviously this is not a sprint, this is a journey, right? We're talking about marathon, we're not talking about sprint. So, um, so, so, you know, long time, I've actually, I feel that emotion support is, is really crit critical. Um, how can we really show virtual support with each, with each other? Having that community truly, truly being authentic, um, support each other is super important. Either it's family from family members or from your colleagues or from your peers. That is the, that is the key. Yeah, I can, I can totally relate with this because when we started, I'm a veteran from like work from home, but uh, this working from home for me was different as well because I have my kids in my, in the background, I have like, you know, younger kids and they can always come and knock on the door while you're in the calls and they, they have urgencies, like they're not getting their Lego blocks. And I'm like, that's not an urgent scenario, right? So it, it's totally different than what I have been used to working. And then I remember when we started and this was our uh, start of like, you know, April, April, May timeframe, we had literally, we struggled to find our own corners, like where we need to go and work in a space where nobody's getting the stuff because everybody's on call. My kids are virtual learning and I'm on the calls, my husband is on the call. So we all had to find our own small corners. So I can totally relate with what you just said. And sometimes it, though it felt that we all are in the same house, we are getting to mingle and talk more especially during the dinner time and maybe in between, but sometimes it's overwhelming as well because you're with the same set of people all the time and just connecting with the people virtually. So yes, uh, some people ask me, what you're craving for right now? And I said, I, I am craving for hugs <laughs> and handshakes. <laughs> so totally can relate with it. So um, Mayo, as, as a leading woman leader, what does your own day look like, you know, from, morning to evening and I know you travel a lot as well you're based you're right now in Singapore you are based out of Brussels but how do you manage everything yeah so my official location is Brussels during COVID because of family issues I had to come to Singapore it's my it's my second home um, and it's quite interesting one of the learnings is that I realized actually what is new during this crisis that it actually teaches us that the work the real work can happen anywhere nowadays, right? Mm -hmm. So what? So I have to change my routine from Europe time zone into a East time zone, um, but I, I'm pretty flexible. So in the morning, because that is actually non-European working time. So I had some time to get, a, to actually go out doing some jogging, enjoy some fresh air and to get, you know, really get some energy, uh, sometimes doing some swimming, um, that's really helpful. So my morning time is pretty free and I start to work after, after lunch until midnight because I have to really catch up with European and US time zones. But that works very well because that gives me flexibility mm -hmm. to take care of myself, uh, relax, um, but also doing my work. Uh, I think flexibility is very important. Um, and I, uh, from time to time during the day, I take some rest. I mean, if I feel tired, and I go out and get some fresh air or, you know, doing some exercise. Um, so that's, that's very important. Or even doing nothing, just have some peace of mind, very, very important. Um, 
and if possible, I'd love to meet some friends, but during the crisis, obviously it's quite difficult to meet friends, but I take some opportunity. I was able to see some of my old friends uh, in the last few weeks, which is, which is great. It's not a big gathering, but just seeing friends finally after so long, it's just, it's, I think it's almost life changing for me because I hadn't seen anybody else outside my family for a long time. Um, it's a tough time, honestly. I think, I think it's not easy, but the thing is that um, how can everybody become resilient and also finding some little thing, little fun in your life uh, to feel better. That's, that's something really, really important. Yeah, and uh, I mean, that's, uh, I, I totally can feel that actually. So I can tell you, um, you know, one of the experience I had, um, and we live in a neighborhood for sure, right? So of course, uh, people have their birthdays and young kids have, especially young kids, because they're used to the celebrations, right? And, um, you know, I kind of uh, started seeing uh, messages around like, it's my kid's birthday, we can't do anything. And, you know, she's absolutely feeling sad about it. So, you know, me and my kids, um, you know, we said, okay, why not we take an initiative? So what we are doing, we actually formed a birthday crew. So it's just me and my two kids and we just take a few balloons in the gifts. So whenever there's a birthday around the corner, like, you know, in the neighborhood, we go and we just like, it's just a few minutes. We just walk down, we go say hello, say happy birthday to them. And the smile, which I have seen, I think the most genuine um, thank you and a smile, which I've seen on those faces, which makes me super happy and kind of, you know, gives both me and my kids, like, you know, a chance to say, um, first of all, say hello in person, like from six feet distance for sure, but then also see people and see that a smile, which is coming on their faces. So, which made me really happy. So yeah, I haven't been able to meet my friends, but we have been able to do some of these things, which literally kind of, you know, um, made me happy over the past few months for sure. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. And uh, the little thing, I mean, at the moment, uh, I think specifically during the crisis, the little thing, what I realized that in our lives, um, it's not about what you do, it's not how successful you are, but the little thing in your life actually is a real thing that can make a huge difference. Um, it's all about you, how you feel, actually. Absolutely. Um, I never, I actually never learned that before in my busy life. I was traveling, I was trying to go for a meeting, travel across the world. I came back home. I just got, you know, down. I'm, I was sleeping, <laughs> exercise, that's it. But just a little thing, just pause in your life and do that little thing. Either it's just a little greeting from your friend virtually, it's a little gift from your family, or even just something your family said, thank you, I love you, type of phrase and make a huge difference. It just warmed my heart. And that made me actually change some of my views. I never thought like, I, because I took a lot of things for granted. But now these things, I think, help make me to think about what is important in my life. You know, I thought it was not my, my personal learning in this crisis, which I treasure quite a lot. I think I'll do that too, actually. Um, and I think like, I think one of the things you talked about, this also has helped connect with the employees because again, we can't see each other, but we, we can be there with you for virtual, right? So um, in fact, recently I have started connecting with my team. It's called Wine or Shine O'Clock. So it's not W-I-N-E, it's W-H-I-N-E, it's like wine or shine o'clock. So where I get my team like in a 30 minutes connect, everybody jump in and nobody talks about office, no office work. Talk, talk about your dog, talk about your broken refrigerator, talk about the things which is not working. I can creep about my kids. So it's, I think that 30 minutes is too valuable for me and to, for me to connect with my team and know what's going on, the emotions. And I have been loving it, actually. I have been loving it. I think I wouldn't have done that if this was a normal scenario. So I, I exactly. can't, yeah. In the normal scenario, people don't think about it because everybody took for granted, right? You meet people face to face. But in this crisis, um, you know, getting connected, real connection, either the virtual or, you know, even virtually, that's a, that's a key thing. That's the key thing. I definitely, I definitely resonate with what you're feeling. <laughs> so what's your message to, to all the women leaders out there and also growing women leaders? We have girls in the STEM, right? So what's your message to everybody? 
Yeah, so, so I think uh, it's just my personal experience. I mean, I grew up in a, in a family in China and never thought I would be in STEM area before. Um, but what made me as me today is really, I think having a dream. So I had a dream when I was little, I thought um, I could do something different um, you know, I may not do the STEM, but I want to do something related to science. So along the, along the journey, I, I pursued my journey, my dream, I learned computer science and also felt that actually this is a technology touch everybody's life and I can make a huge difference in different areas. That's why I stick to my dream and, um, and actually progress along, along the journey. So my suggestion to the young uh, women professionals in technology area is really don't give up your dream. Uh, it's not, I know it's not easy because today women still underrepresented in tech space. It's only, in, on average, it's only 25% uh, women presentation in the large tech form or you know, in the industry. Uh, I think really we have to support each other and lean in often. It really have to lean in um, and leveraging our vulnerability, I would say, because we're real. I mean, we talk about real stuff, our feelings, and, and make a difference. Um, the second one is get a support from your family. I mean, in my, in my journey, I actually appreciate all the time support from my family. So my ph philosophy is always that the family first and the job actually is a second because without a happy family, you can never perform the best you in your work. That would be my little my little tips of today. No, that's, that's absolutely true. That's absolutely true. And I think that is much needed for all the young professionals, uh, women professionals um, who are trying to get to that leadership position and also grow in this tech field, right? So I think that's one of the best advice I've ever heard. So thank you so much. So I totally appreciate your time today, Mayo, and joining us and talking to us today, sharing your experience, how you are breeding crisis during this, and how, you, how you're breeding innovation, I'm sorry, <laughs> how you're breeding innovation during this crisis. Um, you know, so it was, it was very lovely talking to you. Um, thank you so much for joining today. Thank you for having me. Have a good session.